Blue Beetle Rebirth issue one, Keith Giffen and Scott Collins is on the art. Um, now I will say that before we talk about this, that I have never read a Blue Beetle comic before. This was a first for me. I read the New Fifty Two stuff, and I've got I, I caved on the comics obviously sale and bought the the two thousand six run that James was going well, on about. Yeah, you... it's supposed to be the the best version. Isn't yeah, it? and I believe it's similar to this one, and it's a kind of a continuation of that almost. Did you read the two thousand six run yet, or is that just? No, I, I only bought it this morning. Oh, okay, fair it. enough. <laughs> yeah, that was so. Blue Beetle in this uh, Jaime Reyes is basically was DC's response to kind of Spider Man, where he's this uh, teenager with uh, I'm trying to think of the right term because the spider's not an insect, but basically insect kind of driven powers and trying to fit his life in with superheroing. So it was much beloved uh, until the New Fifty Two. Well, and then changed. To, to quote Bill Bailey, spiders are not insects, but in a war between humans and <laughs> insects, they'd probably yeah. side with the insects. You know what? I hate to say it, but Peter just went up in my respect. Anyone who can bring in some <laughs> Bill Bailey stuff just goes <laughs> up a notch. Uh, yeah, if you don't know who Bill Bailey is, he's an oh, uh, English good. comedian who uh, sings uh, as well as uh, cracks jokes at his stand-up gigs. Actually, and there's a fantastic song called... Uh, Insignation. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're checking that out on YouTube if you want to hear what I was just referencing. But, uh, no. But so, here, so Jaime Reyes became Blue Beetle after the death of Ted Cord, which kicked off of Infinite Crisis. So they haven't been, like, around each other. So this was the first time where we're getting, like, a mentor student relationship for Jaime, I think. Granted, I haven't read the series. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's the first time. This is also the first time I'm hearing that his name is just not Jamie. Yeah. Really? I'm Jay- sure. We, we, yeah. Matt's been saying it like that the whole time I mean, we've been doing uh, this. Podcast. I didn't remember. I just thought it was yeah. Jamie. But Matt said it like five times in the last 30 seconds. Yeah. So it's kind of he's, like, he's, he's, he's Mexican, right? Or like, yeah, Mexican-American. Yeah. Latino. Yeah. You know. I'm sure I remember the New 52 stuff specifically saying Mexican family. Yeah. Most likely. He lives in El Paso. And it's spelled J-A-I-M-E, which I always read as Jaime. Unless yeah, I think it is. Game of Thrones, and it's just Jamie, but that's because George R. R. Martin is weird with language. But yeah. anyways, I digress. Uh, Blue Beetle. So, Pete, carry on. All right. Um, I kind of liked it. <laughs> uh, I'll go on, I really liked it. Is that what you wanted from yeah. me, Matt? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't want to take over hosting duties. That's all well, you were. Um, yeah, so so the book yeah. is basically just a sort of normal morning in a uh, Jaime. Is that how I'm pronouncing it? Yeah, Jaime. Jaime. You can call him Jamie. I mean, it it all depends. This is well, one of those classic comic things where I could read a name wrong my yeah. entire career, and it, then it, I'll hear somebody talk about it, and I'll be like, is that how you say that? Well, for perspective. It's a whole race and Raz, isn't it? Well, yeah. for, for perspective perspective here there was a guy who used to work where i worked whose name was jorge right but obviously it was spelled like george with a j and yeah he wanted all of us to call him george because he thought it was weird all of us walking around call him jorge yeah. so he actually chose for us to call him george um yeah. so maybe it's like that i don't know but anyway yeah. uh, so anyways yeah so, Jamie, Blue Beetle. It, it's a normal uh sort of morning in his life he's going to school and Ted Cord calls like, hey, by the way, there's something going down. Get get your ass over here. And he's complaining. He has to skip out in class again. He's going to get in trouble. But meanwhile, there's a lot of banter between him and his friends who are bickering, and he goes off. This is this is something I like. I like that his friends are in on it already. There's yeah. none of that, like hiding it from his friends. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's already yeah. They're already in on it. As soon as it's brought, they know. They know what's going on. Because what? Cool. One of them even offers, "Oh, do you want me to take your bag while you go and." you know, yeah. deal with us. And he's like, nah, I can put it on the, the, the ship. It's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 But I, I did like how they just threw us into it. There was no, like they gave us little pieces of it in the rebirth uh, special. Well, it's but... interesting you bring that up, Matt. You're skipping ahead, but we'll talk about it now. Well, yeah. This is the first time this has happened. Really? That, that, that where mm-hmm. one of these rebirth new series, well, it's the rebirth issue or not, has, one of those like scenes from that rebirth one shot that special 
has yeah. just flat out became a scene in the comic later on. Uh, the scene, of course, we're talking about, uh, if you remember back in the Rebirth one shot, uh, we see a scene where Ted and Jaime are arguing about, he, well, kind of arguing. You know, he's just like, mm-hmm. I don't really want to be Blue Beetle, can you please just figure yeah. out a way to take it off? And he's like, ah, oh, no, no, this is great, you're a superhero, what are you complaining about? Yeah. And then Dr. Fate shows up and tells him it's magic and not actually alien, alien technology. And yeah. this scene takes place in this comic. It's in the middle of this story. And yeah. I thought that was very interesting. Not so much for anything in this comic. I mean, it fits, it's fine and great. Nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. But what it makes me wonder is some of the other scenes in Rebirth's one shot to come that I know yeah. th- I'm now thinking about, specifically yeah. the one with the atom, felt like it was in the middle of a story. Yep. Yeah. Um, I could see the one that teases the Legion being mm-hmm. maybe the start or even the JSA, like the you JSA know, one. I was just gonna say, yeah. Uh, oh. I could feel any of those like being like in the first issues of a new because they always those. felt like snapshots of something anyway. I think yeah. we mentioned that when we covered it way back in the and, last and episode. We're all talking. All of these come from I think the same section too, which is the yeah. second section yeah. of what's going on now. And if that was like so. a list of promises almost, and this is the first one to be fulfilled, then yeah. Yeah. yeah, the only yeah. other comic that's been I... similar to this was the Flash one. Yeah, that was a little bit different though, because it was like the same character like moving on, and it was just kind of recapping it. You know, it was uh, yeah, but it played with the it, it. still had the same moment in there. It still played. Well, yeah, to that that's... moment. But what Pete's saying is that it's not just a snapshot of yeah. We didn't focus the camera in on that very moment and capture it like this right here, and uh, but yeah. So, but my main point was going to be like there's no setup of exactly who Ted Cord is, who Jaime slash Jamie is. Mm. It's, you know, they just throw us in, that, except that he's a mentor. Uh, he's an inventor, billionaire guy, kind of Tony Stark or Jace. Which, and, uh, although he's got a lot more sort of a, it's, it's less like a sarky or sarcastic. He's more just excitable. Yeah, it's more yes. like a genuine excitement of doing what he's doing rather than, oh, I'm a cynical rich guy who, you know. Yeah. I have to say, like, well, what... Well, I agree, yeah. Matt, your point was great. Like, it does just throw us in. I would be interested to hear from anyone who doesn't know these characters at all and if they just pick this up as their first comic well, sort of thing. For I'm this kind stuff, of then. in that camp. Like, I've never but read you, you, Sure, you've never read them, but you know who Ted Cord is. You, you have, like, I know the name. Of I, you know, I know Cord Industries, you know, and, like, I know tidbits like that. Because to, to Matt's point, yeah, you do get thrown in here. I think there's enough here. That at least for now, in issue the issue one, I'm like, okay, right, I'm following. I have no idea who this evil chick is at the end, but yeah. like, you know, I'm following along. Like, he's the mentor. He's the teenager. Doesn't really want to do what he's doing. And yeah, I get the Spider-Man comparison because he does feel kind of mm-hmm. Spider-Man-y. Um, they even have that panel, you know, where he first, like he suits up to jump in, and he's it's almost yeah. like he's swinging towards the. Even the suits the kind yeah. of like Iron Spider esque. Yeah. Yeah. The but, era. I mean, oh five, oh six, but. What I will say is, though, is I do hope we do get a bit more of like who they actually are, and maybe a bit more of the backstory mm-hmm. over the arc. You know, well, just to like fill me in, fill, fill me in on exactly how Ted Cord stopped being the Blue Beetle, for example, and things like that. Give yeah. me those. Yeah, it's yeah. worth knowing. This is just a it's, it's just a rebirth. It's not even the actual issue one, so oh, I right. can see them not wanting to give away too much important oh, yeah. stuff like that for yeah. in case anyone and it's funny this up. Because, see, see, for the first like, few pages, I was thinking, oh, this is another one of these ones that's just, like, issue one. Kind of like how Batgirl and the Birds of Prey, that Rebirth yeah. issue is just issue one of the series, really. You have to yeah, kind of same for Green that. Arrow. Um, same mm-hmm. for Green Arrow. First few pages, I was thinking this was going to be that. But then by the time it got to the end, I'm like, oh, no, they actually found a way to sort of... Because essentially all this really was is he goes to this diner where these two henchmen are. Uh... Well, not a diner. It's, it's their version of Starbucks, Sundollar, which always cracks me up because... <laughs> That that is that is such my era of when I got into comics was they used to have these fake ads for like Sun Dollar and Big Belly Burger and whatnot. So yeah, so and the fact that it's Giffen doing it, that was kind of the era where they were letting him do fun things like his Metal Men and stuff. So I just I thought it was funny that it's Sun Dollar and that's where these two bad guys what are they Ruin and Rack Rack yeah Rack and Ruin are just trashing the place. Yeah. So, whilst yeah. whilst philosophizing, 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 yeah. <laughs> Philosoph- philosophizing, Philosoph- uh, I, 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 that word. I got you. Um, and ruining metaphors and all sorts of things. I mean, that was the thing that really stuck out to me in this issue is just how yeah. playful the banter was, 
between yep. the two villains, between Ted and Jaime, between uh, Jaime's friends, like even his mum and the sister, like yeah. all of it was very quick, you know, fire back and forth. Yep. Um, and that was what I liked more than anything else about it. I did like the tone overall because it it did feel like mm-hmm. an Ultimate Spider-Man kind of vibe. It's it's yeah. kind of traditional like a teenage romp sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which well, we're going to kind of yeah. have the Supergirl, but there's not too much of that elsewhere in the DC like well, Rebirth lineup. So I don't think DC's had it for a while, really. Mm-hmm. I can't no, remember the last really Teen Titans when they were actually teens, like when he had the the Johns relaunch. Which oh, yeah, we, we definitely didn't have anything in New 52, did we? No. And then, that's the thing that we're supposed to, that whole Young Justice line, you know, but nothing really added up. Like, Superboy, it felt... You could tell, like, these were middle-aged guys writing stories about teenagers that yeah. don't really spend much time around them, whereas I feel like Geffen does kind of, like... Even if he doesn't, he can tap into that mindset still. Yeah, oh, he's just he's exactly. just a teenager. What happened is, is that he started writing this in 06 when he was about five, and now he's in his teens, so he, he gets teenagers like really well. Yeah, friend's like sixty something, Pete. That was a joke, Matt. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going on that. That's where I was like. I, I was making uh, a new fifty-two. That's much the age of the Robins, like kind of thing. Uh, uh, I see, I didn't get that either. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Hunter. Mm. Oh, well. but uh, but no, like. So it's it's good that that is with Supergirl and with this, hopefully with Teen Titans, because we're getting Wally and Flash. You know, he seems to be taking a bigger... As as Williamson's story is progressing, Wally's becoming a bigger part, and we know he's going to have a part in Teen Titans. Uh, it's worth yeah. mentioning because, that uh, th- the first few pages of Teen Titans, a preview of that went up today on the interwebs. Oh, it looks fantastic. Look at that. And I had a glance yeah. at it. I, didn't, I, I always make a point of not actually reading the, the dialogue and stuff. I, yeah. I just like to glance at the art. But I, I, the one thing I did notice at the end of like the fourth page, whatever the last one was, uh, Wally, new Wally, Kid Flash, like trips yeah. or whatever, and he just he, he falls right in front of Damien's feet, and Damien makes a quip, and that was the last thing you seen in the preview. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm looking forward to this. This is it's, yeah, this the is art is, is very good. Though. Yeah. Good. I don't, I, I don't know hear. what what crazy voodoo magic Ben Percy's doing to get all the best artists between his two books, but somehow he's, must, he's wrangling He them. must be like a artist writer to where he's just like, look, it doesn't have to be exact in the script, just hit the spirit of it. It's, it's not of this. Do you know what it is? Yeah. It's his what? incredible deep voice where he just speaks to them on the phone and they're like, yeah, I'll do it. That's, that's all it is. They <laughs> can't the power refuse of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad for Percy being able to do more fun stuff because um, Arrow... Arrow, while being fun, he's ruminating in the dark right now with the whole um, human trafficking aspect of the burning and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. so, what are you talking about? That's lighthearted, good fun for all the family. Yeah. <laughs> so we were on but, Blue Beetle? Blue Beetle, yeah. yes, that's what we're talking about. But anyways, and, and don't take the digression as that it's less It's just, it's a rebirth. And I'm definitely interested in hearing yeah. more. Being a, I love the idea of Blue Beetle being a legacy character and uh, Ted Quarter is one of those characters coming out of Infinite Crisis. Like he was more important dead than he ever was alive, because when he was alive, he was just kind of Booster Gold's best friend and kind of like a, a secondary Batman type billionaire, but plays out a hero. Yeah. So here, it's I think it's going to give him more to do. And the whole point of the Scarab, which has always been alien as far yeah. back as you know we can go, even when Dan Garrett was running around as a pulp hero. It was this alien scarab that he had found in Egypt. Uh, the fact that fate shows up and says that it's magic it blows my mind. Because how are they going to rate this now? Plus, you get bonus points for having fate in your series because I love fate. Uh, of course. Well, you love fate it. like I love Booster Gold, so but, I can't. I can't. Really yeah, see exactly. It. This is just yeah. keeping them warm until JSA kicks <sighs> back up. That's so I'm, I'm good because that was the that was the thing in the solicits that hit me hardest. Yeah. Doctor Fate has finally been cancelled. That's it's the last issue in what November. Yeah, number eighteen. Yeah, yeah and I, re- I thought maybe it survived the culling because it had gone so long. Every month it was like not there was no final issue on. No, no, they're it they're was trying just, to rebuild. Well, no, because JSA is going to be in wave two, so it was just yeah. lasting till near the end of like before phase two and started. That's all. And and this strange is supposed to be a supporting character now in Blue Beetle going forward. 
So, and Giffen has experience writing that character too. So, it should be fun. Did Matt just call Fate strange? He said strange. Yes, yeah. he did. That, I did, didn't I? That's yeah, because yeah. he's strange to Jace. Uh, I, I do hope in, in JSA though we get both Fates. Hmm. Yeah. Because I've been there's enjoying. There's more than one. That's why yeah. I like Doctor Strange more because there's only one. No, nah, because you've got the new one at the minute that's in the the series, but Ken Nelson popped back up, and this is Kent Nelson so we got in this. So who's so who's the new one then? Uh, his name's Khaled. So is that the same guy as the one that was in uh, Earth Two? No, I, I think it's the same character name, maybe. Okay. I, I haven't read Earth Two in so long. Well, well I did download uh, the first trade of. Strange for you, Connor. And when I have time, I will read it. I'm not sure if you're doing this on purpose or not, but okay. I did that one on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, between the two, by the way, I'm Team Fate. I'll just I'll put that out there. Well, of course, you're a DC first guy. And also, <laughs> once Jason Aaron stops writing Strange, I will no longer be writing. Uh, for you're, him. You're, you're on your bike. You're, you're re into the sunset when Aaron yeah. hangs up his hat. Oh, of course. Of course. Uh, right. So to sum up on Blue Beetle, which we have somehow managed to divert from. Of, uh, the whole DC universe. A numerous, t- a numerous number of times now. But, um, Banner's very good. First issue is basically just the one fight, teasing kind of the, the, the tone of the book. We get a little tease yeah. for the villain at the end. And that's pretty much it. I don't think it was anything else, but it was fun. Nice rebirth book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh.